So for this part of the question, I wanted to get first into a kind of specific, you could say, account from our scriptures, and then perhaps in the next segment, give a more esoteric understanding of the cause of, you could say, evil or suffering in this world. So I want to give a specific answer to the time we are in now. In our Dharmic traditions, uh, it is called Kali Yuga. So we understand there's different cycles of existence in life, just like there are four seasons, spring, summer, win fall, and winter. In the same way in our Dharmic traditions, we have four cycles of ages, uh, known as Satta Yuga, the age of goodness, Treta Yoga, Treta Yuga, in, there's the age of sacrifice, Dwarpur Yuga, the age of worship and things like that. Kali Yuga is, you know, an age full of specific problems. And that's the age we are understood to be in. And so sometimes we have a kind of myopic worldview according to the times we are in. So in other ages, we understand, um, you know, life is a very grand thing. It's as we understand it, it's, you know, like we were hearing before from the Swamiji and Akeshavji that there's not necessarily a origin point of existence. It's eternal, just like God is eternal. Um, it just goes through different cycles of being. The present age of Kali Yuga, there is undoubtedly, you know, or you could say irrefutably, problems we face. And so we're trying to address these problems and correct them you know, by having respect and tolerance and also trying to see the good in others. Um, one thing to say, this is very important, our Dharmic scriptures say that the soul is sinless. It is pure, part and parcel of God. So sin is a covering of illusion, ignorance, and false ego. It's a product of the false ego, and it's a re react. It's a event caused by you know this material existence and by illusion and by you know harming others. But the soul itself is pure. So this is in the Bhagavad Gita. We've all been quoting Bhagavad Gita. There's a beautiful verse, chapter two. We should understand that the soul is pure, eternal, and deathless. Krishna says in the Gita that Never was there a time when God did not exist, myself. Krishna is saying, I did not exist. You, Arjuna in this case, or all these kings. We are eternal spirit soul. And we are pure. Now, sin is a product of the false ego, which is a covering of illusion or ignorance. And so, therefore, if we can root out ignorance and illusion and come into true self-knowledge, then we free ourselves of this cycle of sin, action and reaction, good and evil, and we attain the pure life. A specific story of this age. There's a great, you could say, a personality who represents this age called Kali. So he would be kind of the equivalent to a figure like Satan. The difference being that Satan and Kali, you know, Satan is kind of almost like a co-equal status, you know, good and evil. Although God is more powerful, he's almost, you know, uh, you know, a challenger. So in our understanding, Kali is actually just a quality of that period of time. He is a personality who lords over this period of time, which is symptomized by trouble more than other ages. Um, there's a story in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one of our ancient scriptures, that he himself was seeking place to reside in this world, this force of evil, you could say. And he took up shelter where there is intoxication, prostitution, gambling, violence. Those places are where you could say the evil forces reside especially. And so there's a personality of that force of evil called Kali, he could be your, like your equivalent to the Satan figure, but he's only ordained, you could say, for this period of time. And he's more like someone who is giving us the reactions to our own sins, like a judge. Meaning, again, it's not some external force that is causing problems. Ultimately, we take personal responsibility. But there's an interesting story about how he came into possession of these places. There was a great king. He is known to be present like five, 6,000 years ago, great king known as Parikshit Maharaj. And he was establishing righteousness in the whole world, 
But when it came time for this new age to come to be, then this personification of the forces of darkness in this present age came to the king for shelter, saying, it is my time now. Where is my place? So he said, wherever anyone takes refuge in, you know, unimpeded, you know, prostitution, gambling, intoxication, violence towards others, this is like a breeding ground for suffering. It, you know, when you come into these lower modes, what is called tamagun, the lower modes of ignorance, then you tend to cause violence not only to yourself but to others. So this is kind of like the breeding place of all this pain and suffering in the world. But ultimately, it's a product of the time we're in also. And it's important to know that we don't blame others. And we also don't blame the soul itself or the, that conscious particle within us. At this time, we only understand it to be like a witness. It's pure in spirit and sinless, but it is covered over by this kind of false ego and the modes of nature which are forcing us to act in different ways. But ultimately, we are pure and sinless. Therefore, God does not judge us. Ultimately, when we achieve liberation, God does not think, oh, you are that sinful person who did this and this and this and this. No, these were only coverings of ignorance and illusion. The soul is pure.